when the entire world had to witness the horrible atrocities the Russian army has been committing to Ukrainians in our country. In places like Ucha, Kustomi, Yedmini, and others. This was the start of April, and since then, we've been living in war every day, every hour, every minute. Even those of us who are here, geographically, our heart is that home in Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alina, for the powerful words and for the amazing work that you 
you do. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Natalia Pasic. She is a world-renowned pianist and the director of uh, Ukrainian Institute in Sweden, has received numerous awards and Stockholm City's cultural grant for her contribution to this town. One of her latest projects is called Consolation, the Forgotten Treasures of the Ukrainian Soul. And it's simply beautiful. No wonder it has received high acclaim from international critics. I can go on and on about her, but I will stop here. Ladies and gentlemen, Natalia Pasichna. College of Music and people are going to play here. But I would like to, to say something, some words that I will be guiding you through this, this music a little bit because, um, as Olena told some of you are uh, going to hear it first time. I think actually that all of you probably will hear it for the first time because it was really visually possible to get Ukrainian music highlights before. And I'm very thankful for both Olena and organizing and for the uh, the church to uh, give this opportunity for the concert. And you may ask probably why we never have heard that uh, uh, names of these composers. Who is Lepushinsky? His music is worse than, the, uh, than Tchaikovsky, for example. What is the reason for that? So I just wanted to tell you very, very short a little bit historical background. Because without this, it's very difficult to understand in general everything. And it's also very often which I get a, a question, why Russia is so obsessed with Ukraine? And it's also, you have to go a little bit further in history. Actually, the best I would take you a thousand years ago history, because really the conflict starts there. But of course, we're not going to go as far. But just a little bit, because this war did not start 24. February, this did, war did not start 2014. This actually this struggle has started for 350 years ago when the agreement was signed between two states. One is the state with the more than thousand years old with the European rules, with democratic uh, rules and uh, democratic um, votes and uh, uh, the first uh, constitution. Uh, Kozak state and another which is the, uh, the Moscow principality which just started to blossom during the invasion of Mongol Tatars and it took from it this state uh, system with very strong vertical of power, with very strong one leader and with a slavery system and which treated all agreements as a capitulation already there. So during this time, all this 350 years, the history of Ukraine was a constant fight to be free. And this is what you see now, it's actually the culmination of this. And culture was always a very, very strong part of this fight. Because as you probably remember, the was a historical speech of Putin before his invasion of Ukraine, where he told that there is no such a nation as Ukraine, and Ukrainians are Russians, and now we will once and forever, with this war, convince them, because they uh, refuse to understand that. This is not something new which Putin invented. This is something which Russia always looked at Ukraine during Tsar's time, during Soviet time, and during Putin's time. Because if you don't have culture, you don't have language, you don't have a nation. So why do I say that this cultural heritage being stolen from us? It's another, another aspect that when you were born in Ukraine and you wanted to be a famous uh, painter or a musician or a poet, you wanted also your children to be famous. So you basically had 
young choice, you had to become Russian brilliant uh, uh, musician or composer or rapper. And most of you know them as a great Russian culture. I can give you some examples. Malevich, Repin, Chekhov, even Tchaikovsky has a Ukrainian roots, Prokofiev, Stravinsky. And when we are talking about my field, the pianist, the great piano, Russian piano school, Nehaus, which is the father of, of uh, this great piano school, are born in Kropivnitsky, got his education in Kropivnitsky and then in Poland. So, uh, Richter, Yilis, Gorovitz, uh, Oyster. We can go on and on. But then we had those who stayed and they tried to, probably they thought a little bit broader than just their own career. They tried to develop the national school. And of course, the only thing that they could count on, in best case, if they are not short or sent to Siberia, they're just being ignored. And of course, that's why we don't. We don't know them here because no one, uh, most of them were very, very oppressed. And in this program, which these young musicians chose by themselves in a very nice way, I think, they start and finish with Boris Letushinsky, which is, he's not the father of Ukrainian national school like Sibelius for Finland, for example. Because in Ukraine it's Mikola Lysenko, and I will talk about him a little bit later on. But Boris Letushinsky, in my opinion, is the most profound figure uh, that actually, if the history would be different, his symphony would be played in every concert house exactly as often as Mahler and Wagner. This is a very, very big figure, and his music was also very much influenced by Wagner and by Mahler as well, but it always had this very, very typical Ukrainian melody. And the texture of his music is very thick, and the approach to, to the music is very intellectual and spiritual. So he was very much criticized in the Soviet, and even banned for a time, for being anti-Soviet, for being propagandist of dissonance, which was very against the harmonic Soviet reality. His second um, symphony was banned and he had to rewrite it, but even after he did it, it was not rehabilitated in any way. So now you will listen to the quarter which he wrote, and this is something which I think is very interesting that both this. Um, and the prelude, piano prelude, which these young musicians chose for the this concert, they both are, were written during the war time, during the Second World War. So they chose this subconsciously. And of course, the music reflects very much those difficult times. And both are based on Ukrainian folk melodies, which is also very, very clear in, in uh, the musical texture. So now I would like to give the stage to my young colleagues, the 